welcome back. And I'm giddy with excitement to introduce my guest today. I should give a drum roll, but I don't have any drums here, but that's to show you how excited I am. So Peter Shaw is an exceptional young man that I call a change agent. He's a special educator, speech and language therapist. But I am most fascinated by his drive to make society a more inclusive and accessible place to people living with disability. He is the founder of The Exceptionals, a self-funded, very important, a self-funded initiative to promote inclusion and reorientation of people living with disabilities. So, without further ado, hi Peter. Hi. hi. How are you? Doing very well, thank you. You sure? You look very well. <laughs> you eh? look very well. <laughs> so Peter, um, of course you know that um, I like and I always applaud the work that you do when we speak and then it becomes even more important now that a lot of young people have misplaced priorities. Right. So I want to ask you, why the exceptionals? And how did you get into this? Um, why the exceptional? Yes. I feel like it's more of why me to... Okay, so apparently I, I was in school, no, proud to, you know, get into school to study. It was just me being passionate, you know, love being around people like that. I was exposed very early, you know, to being around people living with disabilities. And then it's very comfortable, yeah? I love being around them, helping them, you know, um, seeing that they do things like everybody will do them. Right. And, um, you know, that was it first. It was just the passion. And, you know, I felt that at some point I know I love them, but am I doing it the right way? Because I realized that I'm just doing it. And then, you know, sometimes you're doing it and then you find out that, OK, yeah, you could have done it better. Right. And then. When, so, OK, let, let me ask you, when you say them, I think that's the problem we have in the society. This dichotomy of mm, they, mm, of us and them. Mm, but at the end of the day, um, somebody living with disability is as human as you and I. Mm -hmm. And then we've realized that not being born with disability does not exclude you because mm -hmm. disability can happen at, mm -hmm. at any time. So for a young person like you are, mm -hmm. of all the things, I mean, you could have done music, dance, fashion, right. Right. but you chose to work with people living with disability and trying to let them know that they are exceptional right. because they, they are as equipped with in intellect as right. we are. Right. So how, okay, since you were young, you got involved right. in, in them. But what makes them exceptional? I think that's, that's the question. What makes them exceptional is, you know, I, I think very early in my life, one thing I had to do was, you know, put myself in their shoes. You know, I put myself in their shoes, right? And then, Peter, what if you didn't, you couldn't see? Would you be able to do what this guy is doing? Mm -hmm. If you couldn't walk, would you be able to do what this guy is doing? I mean, that is exceptional enough. That's unique. Okay. I mean, the fact that I can't do it, mm -hmm. and they can do all I can do, and still have those, you know, what we call limitations, which they are not limitations, mm -hmm. the, what we call limitations, yeah, right? They can still do the things I can do, but I can't do what they can do if I to be in their shoes, right? I think that's unique enough. That's what being exceptional. So the society of uh, abled people, for lack of a better word, how are we doing with this exceptional people? How are we contributing to this better life that the people living with these challenges have? Yes, yeah, so um, I, I, I say for every time I meet people and then we have a chat, um, I mean, the, I think one of the problems I've had, mm -hmm. you know, um, in this part of the world especially is, you know, majority of people we see on the road, majority of people we see living with these disabilities are always the beggars, are always the, you know, the people who are struggling to live, are always the people who cannot take care of themselves, who do not have families and all of that. And I think that's, you know, affected our perception about them, right? And then, um, you know, now, unlike before, right, these people come out. You see them, you know, you see doctors, you see lawyers, you see engineers, you know, have disabilities, changing the perception, but I don't think they're out enough. 
I think the more we have them out, you know, showing their strengths, because I believe that every human being has strengths and weaknesses, right? We pay attention more on the weaknesses of persons with disabilities, but, you know, every human being has strengths and weaknesses. I have areas that I'm not good, and I also have areas that I'm good, right? Same as people living with disability, they have strengths and they also have weaknesses. So we start to pay attention on the strengths, let them show it. And I think that's one of the reasons why I started Exceptionals, a platform where they can show it, not reading in a book. We have read in a book. I studied reading in a book. But again, what helped me to, you know, move from being sympathetic to empathetic is, you know, my neighbor, you know, was, you know, um, was visually impaired. You know, the next was hearing impaired. And I see them do things that I cannot even do. That changed my mind without even me knowing. Right. And I think if everybody can have people like that in the society, see them more, do these things to change their perceptions, right? Yeah, okay. about this certain person. Now, my, um, one of my biggest fascination with the work you're doing is this phrase that you shared with me called joy in chaos. Right. How did that come about? Okay, then. So um, I, I met you know, an amazing individual. Um, his Tommy Waziri by name. Uh, you know, and I heard the story. So I started doing a lot of interviews of persons with disabilities. You know, how, what happened? You know, um, how did you cope with it? How have you been able to, you know, despite all of the limitations, thrive? You know, you have a niche. What, what happened doing to fine. him? Okay, so he, he was a young man, like every other young man in Nigeria who, you know, basically want to, you know, um, survive, make money. And then considering the, you know, how the economy is, you really, don't get to do what you've studied in school. At the end of the day, you start with something small, and then you know, grow. So he started Uber, mm -hmm. you know, the Uber driver and all of that. And then, um, you know, on this fateful day, he went out to, you know, um, pick a rider like every normal day, right? And then, unfortunately, you know, on that one of these bridges, I think a cool bridge in Lagos. Yeah, in Lagos, Lagos Nigeria. Nigeria. So right, he was robbed and shot, you know, by those robbers in the eye, and then that that started his you know, a wow. new phase in his life, wow. right? You know, from being depressed. So he went blind? He went blind. Nothing to He's be blind. saved. He's visually impaired, blind. You know, from being, you know, from being depressed, you know, um, you know, what, what else? You know, and like I say, right? I said the moment we, we, we start to focus on the things we cannot do because of the condition we find ourselves in, we do not see that there's joy in the things that can be done. There are a lot of things that could be done right but if you continue to focus on now i do not i cannot see so these are the things i'll get to miss these are the things i cannot do then you know you don't just see the bright future you don't see anything coming out of you but the moment you you know shift from that phase to a phase where you know you start to see things you can do despite the condition you are in then you see the joy there so he found joy he in found the chaos joy in that, chaos. that there was a life of sudden disability right but it was not easy he was not easy he went through the phases of depression. It's not easy for anyone. How, how did his family support him, or friends, or even the society in general? Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, I think for him, he had you know, an amazing, amazing family. His mom, very supportive. You know, his girlfriend at that time, you girlfriend. know, actually, yeah. Um, prior to Women. the incident, prior to the incident, she's an exceptional person too, right? Prior to the incident, they were not even, I don't think he had plans to, you know, propose. And then in the middle of the incident, she's saying that we get married. I mean, that's, that's nice. That is joy in the chaos. That's joy in the chaos. Cause, and it will also help him to, you know, um, you know, see beyond the situation. I think that also helped him see beyond the situation and then see that, okay, yeah, regardless of what I am, regardless of the condition I'm in right now, there's still something meaningful with my life. I could be, okay. a, you know, I could be a motivation to other people. And now he's a motivational speaker. Yeah, you, said you know, he's write an books. Yeah, write books on yeah. author. He's and married with children. Two children, beautiful children. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Very, very exceptional life. <laughs> very exceptional. So, it's it's about a mental shift. This right. joy and the chaos that yeah. comes with it. It's about shifting. It's a mindset. Yeah, it's a mindset. But the bottom line that it is not easy. So at we all. don't think that you just wake up at and all. you do that. At all. But So let me relate this joy in chaos to all the things that you do, because I know you go around schools, people right. living even with Down syndrome yeah, and right, all that, right. and trying to bring out right. yeah. some of the, yeah. their talents. Yeah, yeah. so yes. um, basically the, um, 
you know, um, what I'm after is, you know, an aware society, an inclusive society, oriented society of persons living with disabilities. And then how do I achieve this? You know, I started with, like I said, I started with interviewing people, you know, who have found a niche for themselves, thriving. How did you do it? So other people who find themselves here now, or, you know, I've been living here without a purpose, can see these people, and then you be a motivation to them, right? And then I felt like, okay, um, in Nigeria, right, um, you find, you know, most people keep locking their children in the house, but I mean, children the, living with disabilities. Yeah, children yeah. living with disabilities, right? And then you ask some of the reasons you find is no money, right, to you know take care of this child because I mean it's too expensive, like we know. But you know, and most of them don't know that they're actually free schools. Mm -hmm. You know, like for, Pacelli. yeah, there's, there's Pacelli, there's Wesley, Wesley, there's Atondaolu, that mm -hmm. free schools, you know, government-owned schools, private. You know, own schools through that free, you know, to help cater for these children. But, you know, because of the lack of awareness, right, they do not know and then deprive these children from you know, going to school and also, you know, developing their skills and all of that, right? So I thought it to, you know, do, you know, um, you know special inclusive school tours around Nigeria, special large. Special inclusive, inclusive school, school tours, tours around right Nigeria. Now. So to help to, you know, bring to the awareness, you know, of these schools. And so these parents would not have a reason. I mean, Aside from the knowledge, most people say it's too expensive. But free schools, it's free. <laughs> it's free. So it's free. there's no excuse you can give for but locking your child the in the house. But yeah. the care for the children is not easy. And I think we need um, institutions like churches, the yeah. government, yeah. And the mosque to, to help right? to, to come around. Yeah. So, like I said, you were self-funded, yeah. and I know that um, that is an economic <laughs> disability. <laughs> that is an yeah. economic yeah, disability. Yeah, so. Um, a lot of young people, we'd like to say Gen Z, they are only into themselves. And you're as mm -hmm. Gen Z as, as it gets, because I, I know how old you are. <laughs> so, all I'm saying that, in the midst mm -hmm. of, we've just survived our protest, and right. uh, it's still going on. Right. And so, it is chaotic. So, I want you to tell us, you coming from your Gen Z side of life, <laughs> how do you tell your fellow young people that even with this crippling economy like i said it's an economic disability right how do you encourage them to say that we should protest in a different way a change of behavior a change of attitude and find ways mm. that we can be of use to the society i know you are really doing this work with our money i right. know that right. for free that's why i can say this boldly um how do you encourage your young people right that economic disability is not the end. They can mm. get creative, right. they can get innovative right. with, with the times. And not even just young people. I mean, right. You can inspire you el too. elders, elders like, <laughs> elders like me. So. Okay, then. So I think, um, I think the first thing is nothing comes easy, right? Um, I think the only, the only reason why I find it you know, interesting is because it's what I'm passionate about, right? I think you know, the first thing is looking for something that you love doing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and then money is less, I mean, the least of your problems, right? Look for something you love doing and then, you know, just invest your time into doing those things. Start small. You know, I started, I remember the first phone I started to use you know, to do my recordings and all, my father bought it was for it me. Was yeah, it was a Yeah, it was a Palasa phone, but my dad bought it for me, right? And then, you know, um, I remember at some point, you know, I didn't have specific equipment, so the videos were, you know, somehow, somehow. But yeah, I mean, that didn't stop me from doing what I loved doing. I mean, I enjoyed every bit of it, right? And then I'm still growing, right? Because, I mean... Uh, sometimes I want to do some things. I do not have enough of money to do them, right? But I mean, I still enjoy it. Sometimes I get disappointments mm. from, you know, people, but I still enjoy it. It's something I enjoy doing. So I think the most important thing is find something you love doing. Invest mm -hmm. your time into doing that thing. And you find the joy, you know, in all of the economic chaos, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. find you find that joy. Yeah, um, but significant, it's very important that, you know, we're open about it. When you say... I'm doing this without money. How mm. can somebody really do anything without money? We will take, okay, maybe your little side hustle. You're using this work right. to do tight <laughs> so that people will know that whatever you earn, there's mm -hmm. still an opportunity for you to support or yeah. you can go to 
any organization and volunteer. I think from volunteering, yeah, people right, can, can yeah, do this. Yeah. Because the, somebody's watching you now and saying, it says I should start from nothing. What is happening? Is it so, so it's, you know, so yeah. even Jesus had to get some bread to yeah. feed everyone. So it's maybe to encourage whatever you have, mm -hmm. you can do. Or when you come together through social media, right. you can just lend your skill right. if you don't have the the yeah, money yeah. so for me right i i started and I'll, I'll just say this right i started with um uh, my own phones right mm -hmm. uh, my parents i was on i started in school yeah. i was in 211 when i started right so i leave from ibadan to lagos mm -hmm. just to come do my interviews and go back right mm -hmm. but that was my my pocket money what mm -hmm. we call pocket money right mm -hmm. and then I, when i saw that it was something i really did it, I, I i didn't see myself stopping mm -hmm. then i started working Working in my field, too, mm -hmm. right? I was a special educator, so, you know, I come to Lagos, work on Friday, Saturday, do my recordings or so, they go back to school, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like money, you would need money. Yeah, you so the, the thing is that you don't wait till you're a you billionaire. You don't wait, right, exactly. Till you're, till you're a so the passion is going to push you. Okay. Yeah, push you to do, you know, good things, but not bad things. <laughs> <laughs> not bad things, good things, right? Yeah. yeah, so it's a passion, I think. It's just yeah, a passion. And, um, like I said, I mean, Peter is here, so I would encourage uh, people who need your uh, the kind of work you do and schools that you visit, yeah. you know, to get in touch with you. Your social media handle yeah. is there, and yeah. um, I wish you all the all the best. Thank and you. we'll always keep in touch. Thank so you. Anytime you have a project, you bring it onto the bar so that we can drink together and Thank then you, man. Thank and you. then and then talk about. If you have any message for anyone out there the people living with these challenges or mm. young people alike, they have the floor. Okay then, so um, I, I say this everywhere I go and I'm also going to say it here, right? So um, regardless of the disability, right? Um, you know, there's a person, you know, there's a person who has a purpose, right? Um, that's not limited. Purpose is not limited to whether you have a disability or not, right? So you know you're an individual, you're a human being, you have a purpose. You know, find that purpose. You know, um, people. You know, people say that you know you don't do these things. You don't do these things. You don't do these things. Do you even know who you are first? Because if we are going to advocate with you, not for you, because it has to be you knowing who you are, and then I come in to help you, maybe lend a voice. So it's not me doing the. It's we are doing it together, right? So you have to first of all know who you are, your purpose, push for it. So as we are lending the voice, I mean, it's. It's, it's, there's a synergy that the energy is, you know, the same, right? I'm not lending a voice for someone who doesn't even know, you know, I'm not lending a voice for someone who wants to go out there and then start to beg, mm -hmm. you know, start to force your way through. Have a niche for yourself, find your purpose and then thrive. Basically, the sky is too big for every bird to fly. That's what yeah. they say, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's it basically. Thank you, Peter. I told you he was exceptional. Yeah. And so, Thank you so much for Thank your you time, very and then I wish you every success because your you. success really is Thank our you. success. Thank so you. So this is Peter and um, Peter Shaw, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next time, same place, same station. For more, please visit. For more, please follow us on Facebook, X, and Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can watch us on DSTV channel 408 and YouTube. Make your life a great story. I'm Chinidu. See you next time.